this is gonna be a really boring video as usual. Um, so this is an update on my Harbor Freight 6 by Greenhouse. And I have a few new Nepenthes and some updates. Um, in general, I just added shade cloth to the greenhouse, and despite that, it's still really bright in here. And it's heating up because I turned the heart... And it's heating up because I turned the swamp cooler off. So this is my Nepenthes, uh, Talon... Spectabilis by Talangensis. And this picture isn't really a good representation because, uh, for one, it's dying... And, uh, for another reason, it's an upper picture. So it won't look as great as the lower pictures. The lower picture should have a flared peristome and tons of stripes. This is the entire vine, so you can see. And I put some of the, the special moss in there, the special sphagnum. Yeah. So now I guess I'm going to talk about my Nepenthes Hamada by Platykyla. It's not a Hamada. It is really stupid because it's maintaining leaf size and everything, as you can see. Um, the leaves may actually be getting bigger. But the pictures are really small. If you you can probably look it back in my video, uh, my videos somewhere, and you'll see the picture that it came with. It had a nice, um, it had a peristome this color, but it was really flared out, and it had a picture that was this color. This is like the new picture is like the white color variation clone, and then the the older picture that it produced that is really deformed and too small for it is like the darker color clone. And I have another Hamada by Platykyla over on the other side of the greenhouse, and they're both making little like basal shoots that are coming up. Um, yeah. So they're doing kind of okay. And there you can see the little basal that's coming up from the soil on the other side. On the, no, no, the like the other Hamada by Platykyla on the other side of the greenhouse. They're so this guy, my Nepenthes Spathulata by Spathulata by Botticiana, is growing like a weed. It's growing all the way up and it hits the top of the greenhouse. And from here you can just look right over there and the, the Ventrata is even taller. And it's much longer because it's vining outward. Oh, where am I going? Okay, what? Bye. It's vining outwards and then down and out and it's weird. And there's a couple of vines on it. So th since this one's probably not going to flower this year, I'm going to do a cutting tutorial for you guys. That will be coming up. It's so hot, oh my god, it's so bearable. So here we have the flower of Minopenthes vici by Tivii, and it's producing nectar and it is scented on the lower flowers that have opened. So those are receptive, and the ones up here are yet to open, but they're they're almost open, as you can see. So that's a lot of flowers on there, um, and I'm going to do a pollination tutorial video for you guys. So subscribe for that, and subscribe also to see the, the Nepenthes Ventrata cutting tutorial. Now right over here, we have my Nepenthes Momoka, which is Insignis by Mariliana, and it's producing its biggest pitcher yet. I just said biggest. Biggest, biggest, biggest. And it's probably like 10 inches ish. And it has some nice coloration and a very nice peristome. And since this has Mariliana in it, it should be pretty big. I like big pitchers. So, right here we have my Nepenthes Loia by Spectabilis, which is producing a nice purple pitcher. Strike. <laughs> It was producing pretty big leaves, but then the new one's kind of smaller, and I've noticed that with a couple of my Nepenthes. So I think they're getting too much light, which is why I put the shade cloth on that I covered in the beginning of the video. So this is my Nepenthes Ventricosa Black Peristone, which froze in the mail, and I started it back from uh, two little basal shoots that popped up. And these, I'm predicting, should be about the same size as this guy in about a year, judging by the basils on my Nepenthes Ventricosa Vitaliensis. So two Nepenthes that I forgot to mention were the Nepenthes Ampularias, and these I did a little unpacking video back in like September or something, and um, these, I, I moved them out to the greenhouse, and I had them in a terrarium where they were getting 100 degree days and 50 degree nights, and the terrarium was in the greenhouse, so it was really hot because it was in full sun, and um, they did fine, but then I just moved them out of the terrarium and they started getting uh, cold burns, I guess. 
but the newest leaves are pretty much fine. Um, you can see on this uh, Nepenthes ampullaria that the newest leaf is perfectly untouched and it should be great to go. Um, it's producing, it continued producing pictures and these actually look better out in the sun with the striped peristome. So those should come back and be great growing out here over the summer. So now we're going to move down here to take a look at my sphagnum cultures, but not for the sphagnum cultures themselves, but for what's growing in them. Um, just naturally, these two little Drosera spatulatas popped up, and they're both, I think they're both, yeah, they're both producing flower stalks. Um, one's red, I don't even know how they got in there because these were captive grown sphagnum, so that's a possibility, but I seriously doubt that seeds from spatulatas would have gotten uh, in the sphagnum cultures. So we have other little random Drosera popping up in this one, and there was a couple of others in this one that I can't really find right now. And this one is the cool one, because I started it from crumbs, and I've only added that one Drosera spatulata in there, and um, I've never even owned a Venus flytrap, and I think two just popped up right there. I don't know why, where they came from, there was nowhere for a uh, seed to hide. And uh, right here we have another Drosera spatulata, that came up from literally nothing. Um, there was no little bulb or anything. And these just, they weren't there when I planted the sphagnum. And as I said, this was crumbs. And it's, was, there was like literally nowhere for them to be. So right here we have Saracenia that are popping up randomly in the sphagnum culture. They, I, I don't even know where they came from. Uh, these were wild sphagnum cultures, so that could explain it. But I wasn't expecting stuff like this to pop up in here. This little species of Drosera you've seen before, I have, I think, four or five total between this culture and another culture that I'm not showing in this video. And right here we have a sphagnum culture from Wild Collected in Colorado, and somehow it appears that these look like Drosera capensis, but we don't live in Africa, so there's no way that they could have gotten in here. Um, I've never had Drosera capensis that have flowered in here, so I'm not sure how those would have gotten in here. So it might just be a close look-alike species, but still it's Drosera randomly popping up in a sphagnum culture that, that just doesn't make sense. So I hope you enjoyed this update, and again, uh, don't forget to subscribe to see the Nepenthes ventrata cutting tutorial and the Nepenthes uh, flower pollination tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and don't forget to rate the video and comment on it if you liked it. So I will see you guys next time.